We left all kinds of people stuck there. My name's Kevin. I work for the Orange County Sheriff's Office. I'm leaving back to take a small bit from the city. Um, the goal, uh, obviously, Kissimmee Police Department's doing most of this investigation. We're at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Our people, we have resources out there, obviously, doing active service. So it's kind of a joint effort. So Tech of Small is kind of where you go read through the timeline of everything else. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, where we go up there. All right. You want me to go through the whole timeline? Yeah, is that what we'll start doing? we'll start with Sunday. Take me through Sunday. Anxiety and for sleep. Okay. 
Um, now, could she take that by herself, or would uh, would he have given that to her? Uh, I think she took it by herself. She got home and she had already taken it. How do you Tip know that? That's what he told me. That's what he told you. Okay. Yeah. He was there when you got home. You got home. They were already at the apartment. I don't like her taking her meds without somebody visually seeing, watching her, because I don't want her to accidentally grab the wrong pill. She's comfortable enough to grab the pill bottle, but I'm like, no, I need to watch you take them. Is there ever been an issue with that in the past, where she took too many or took the wrong thing? Or no. just like a thought in your mind? No, just a thought in my mind, just me being hypervigilant. Um, I, I want to physically watch her take her meds and watch her grab two, take them. I don't ever want there to be an accident of... Um, she took too many or she took my biggest fear is that she would take Adderall by accident uh, her daytime meds Got it. Um, I got home around 10:30. I started getting ready for bed myself I started eating and taking my meds because I have to take meds when I went to take my meds I realized oh my god I forgot to take my Saturday night's meds which is why I felt so weird and so abnormal and not myself Sunday while I was at work. Everyone at work noticed I was acting different and not being myself. Like I couldn't smile in front of the guests. I felt this wave of depression that I haven't felt in years. It was my bipolar symptoms coming up again that I just, I've been medicating myself for for the longest time. I realized I forgot to take my meds and I said, you guys, I need a good night's sleep. I need to take my meds. Um, I sent them to sleep upstairs in the best in the guest bedroom so that I could get a good night's sleep. Um, I suggested that we all sleep together in the same bed together, but not the easiest person to sleep with. She rolls around, she punches, she kicks. She'll we have a king size bed and she typically sleeps on one side and she'll end up on my side when we wake up. Okay. So I asked her, I'm like, no, please, I need a good night's sleep. Um, if you guys can go upstairs and let me sleep. Um, I had asked Stefan to take her to school in the morning. We'll go to Sunday. So Sunday you took your meds. What meds, if you don't mind me asking, what meds do you take? And like, well, how does it, do they put you to sleep deep? Does it help you fall asleep? Or does it help regulate you? What, what kind of happens when you take the meds? Um, so they do all of the above. Um, they make me sleepy. They help me stay asleep and they help me function, so I'm stable okay. all day. Um, they only work well if I've got a good night's sleep and if I've eaten with them the night before when I take them, or the night I take them. Um, it's, the medication is called Geodon. Um, gen generic brand is called Ziprazidone. I took my meds. And then uh, I told them to start getting ready for bed, to, to start heading upstairs and get ready because it was already almost 11 o'clock. It's past her bedtime. She needs to go to sleep. Um, so I sent them upstairs. I think he may have come down at one point to pee before bed. And then he went back upstairs. He uses my restroom because the roommates upstairs don't want to share a restroom with a male. Okay. Yeah, so they just use, he uses my restroom. Um, sorry, where did I You're fine. Um, Sunday night he came downstairs, maybe overnight to use oh, the restroom. Yeah, and then he went back upstairs and they went to sleep. Or, where I think he went to sleep. Okay. I, I went to sleep. I was woken up at some time. For the longest time, I've been saying he woke me up at 8 o'clock in the morning because I assumed he was taking her to school and getting ready for school. But in reality, I don't know what time he woke me up. The sun was out a little bit. It was still a little dark. Um, and I was very sleepy when I got up. I was kind of drunk. But he came in to walk the dog, to put the leash on the dog and walk him. Was the dog in the room with you? Yes. So did he wake you up on purpose, or was it just kind of like the causation of him opening the door and you realizing somebody was there? 
Yeah, the causation of him okay. putting the leash on the dog because the way the dog reacted, he gets very nervous and will urinate if you put the leash on him too directly. You have to like be nice and talk to him. <laughs> yeah, he's a very <laughs> he's a nervous dog. Yeah. So um, I got up to try to help him, and he said, "No, no, go back to sleep. I'm fine. I got this." And I said, "You sure?" He said, "Yeah." So I laid back down and went to sleep. Um, I heard noise in the kitchen, but I'm not sure who it could have been. Okay. Getting ready, but it could have been Stefan, it could have been any of my roommates. Um, I fell asleep again, and I didn't wake up, I think, until 9 o'clock in the morning. Did um, you ever leave the bedroom in that time frame? No. So he came in, you were kind of awoken up based on him interacting with the dog, but you stayed in bed, you didn't leave the bedroom. So, if you woke up at like 9, so you never... That morning. Monday morning. No. So the last time you would have... It would have been Sunday evening? Sunday. Okay. I'm sorry, I just... Fine. I want to see her. Yeah. Take a minute. Okay. While you take a minute, I have a comment. I was going to ask you earlier, has anybody reached out to you during the time that you've been investigating this to talk to you about anything else? Negative, positive, neutral? My best friends have all been in contact with me just to try to help me. There's like, you know, setting up Facebook groups, uh, flyers. Um, No, no negative interactions with the public or anything? Nobody's like reached out with tips or accusations or anything like that? Not that I've seen. Did I've he... been avoiding social media because my family's telling me to not go on. Would you be okay with our digital people looking at your phone to verify there's no stuff coming into socials, texts, things like that? That's fine. Do you have the phone? Yeah. What they'll do is they'll plug it in, they'll do a forensic download of it so they have the data. That way they can go through it and say, you know, we did receive things, we didn't receive things, here's the communications in and out, things like that, so we can verify that for you. That's fine. What's your password on it? Uh, 030288. 030288. Okay. Is that a birthday? My birthday. It's your birthday? Yeah. My birthday's tomorrow. Right. Today's the first. <laughs> <laughs> that is like the first, this is the worst person ever. <laughs> sometime between 9 30 9 45 and I head over there it's blood work appointment the appointments for 10 15 but they take a while to see me where was your appointment at lab corp and uh, do you want me to tell you exactly which one sure oh wait I'm not my phone <laughs> when we get it back, we'll um, get back to it. It's 
you need to Google it. It's the lab corp across the street from the loop in Kissimmee. Okay, got it. Had my appointment. I finished there sometime between 11, 15, 11, 11, 15. Then I headed home. When I got home, Stefan was there. I had talked to him a little bit earlier while I was waiting for my blood work appointment. And he let me know, oh, I'm so sorry. I left my phone at home by accident. Um, school, everything went great. She got up super early, got up really quick. Um, she slept most of the way in the car. Um, I asked her multiple times if she wanted McDonald's, but she said no. Because um, that was the plan, was that they were going to stop at McDonald's that morning to go get breakfast. Okay. He said uh, that he had gone to the vape shop, and they were closed, and they didn't open. So he, he waited there for a while and left, and then said he was going to go back later. Um... When I saw him at the house, everything was normal. We were chatting, we were talking, he was acting normal. He was sitting in my computer chair, just messing around on his phone. While we were hanging out, he mentioned something along the lines of, oh man, I've been avoiding this phone update for a really long time. I should probably update it now. And I said, do it, don't avoid it, just get it over with. And he updates his phone and then tells me, Oh my god, I don't know what button I just pressed, but I just factory reset my entire phone. And I said, how the hell does that happen? That gives you options now when you reset your phone? He goes, yeah, apparently I, w I wasn't paying attention and it just I pressed, I just pressed the button and it happened. And I said, oh, that's unfortunate. That sucks. Um, later on, he tells me he's going to go back out, and I think this is around... 12 30 1 o'clock still on Monday yes still okay. Monday 12 30 in the afternoon 1 o'clock in the afternoon he tells me he's gonna go back out he's gonna stop at a few gaming shops uh, and then he'll meet me at the house at 2 30 so we together he left I hung out in the house for a while just waiting for 2 30 to roll around 2.30 rolls around, and I'm already calling Stefan, and he's not picking up his phone. 2.30 comes, I leave. About 10 minutes later, I get a phone call from him going, I just got back home, I left my, home, my phone home again, I'm so sorry. How long ago did you leave? And I said, about 10 minutes ago. He goes, I'm so sorry, I missed it. I really wanted to go with you. And I'm just like, it's fine. I figured he wasn't going to make it because when I looked at the time when he left and said he was going to visit three shops, I didn't think he had enough time to visit them. He told me while he was gone that he got a flat tire somewhere on 182. The wheel just shredded and fell apart. So he was changing the tire, and it took him a really long time to do it. Um... He said he hurt his thumb while changing the tire, like the frame or something slipped and something pitched his finger and he ended up having to yank it out. And he said he hurt his finger. Um, I want to touch on something real quick. When you were calling him, he eventually tells you that he left his phone there. Did you hear the phone at the house? No. If it was anywhere, it would have been upstairs and I wouldn't have heard it. It would have been in the guest bedroom. Do you typically go upstairs? Who, me? Yes. Only if I'm doing laundry. Okay. Also, I was just curious if you had heard the phone uh, when you were trying to call him that day. I did it. So, he tells me all that. I get off the phone with him. I'm waiting wait for about an hour and 10 minutes. 404, the bell rings, and I'm waiting. I'm the first in line. 
and she doesn't come out. You were in your car? I was in my car. In the, in the car line, yeah. Okay. At this point, it's been a few minutes. She should have been out by now because she's usually one of the first kids out. She knows I'm in the front of the line. And I'm holding up the line behind me because there's kids getting in the cars behind and they're all waiting. They can't, oh, yeah. they can't get around me, right? So I start calling her, forgetting that I have her phone on me. I had found her phone earlier that morning. She had left it at home. And I brought it with me because she does this often. She does leave her phone. Where was and the phone at my house? It was on top of the dresser in her bedroom. Downstairs? I never been Down, in downstairs. Downstairs. Okay. So just so you know, mm -hmm. I have a four-bedroom townhouse. Go ahead. The living room has a partition in it, a fake, like a fake wall kind of thing. That's got her bedroom in it. That's got a bed, a dresser, and a desk on it. Does she sleep there? No. She'll hang out there. She'll use her computer and hang out there. She That's her hangout spot. But she primarily sleeps with me every night in my bed. Um, that's because I know the roommates wake up super early in the morning. They're going to be in the kitchen. They're going to wake her up if she's sleeping out in the living room. So I don't. So your bedroom downstairs, her makeshift bedroom downstairs, guest bedroom upstairs. Yes. Got it. Um, Her dresser, her phone was on her dresser. Um, when I found it, I was like, oh my God, she just left the phone out. That's great. Uh, I brought it with me to the school because I was just gonna yell at her and then just hand it to her so she could have something to do on our way home. On our way home. 410 rolls around and she's still not out, or 409. And then at this point, I'm feeling the pressure from the cars behind me. I'm like, okay, they're all full. They're all waiting for me to leave and she's not here yet. So I take off and I'm thinking, maybe I missed her. Maybe I forgot to tell her I was picking her up from school today because I don't know if she knew that I wasn't working. I don't know if she knew if I was off. Um, so I asked, um, I asked, I don't know if I told her that I was going to get her. So I left thinking maybe she walked that's pretty close to school. If I can't pick her up at school, that's where I tell her to go. Um, I drove the path she would have walked. I didn't see her. I got to the office. And she goes, no, it's a little too early. And I said, okay, let me go drive back down and wait along the path she would walk and just wait. And I parked and I waited. I waited, I'm not sure how long I waited, maybe somewhere between five to ten minutes. She still wasn't there, and, and I looked at the time, and I'm like, okay, she should have. She should be back at my mom's office by now. Maybe she took a different path and I didn't see. So I went, no, she's still not here. And I'm like, that's really strange. So I call, I don't know if I text her, I call, I think I text her. And I asked, hey, or I called, no, I called her. I asked, um, and she said, no, she didn't make it to first or second period. And I said, what do you mean? She was dropped off close to the school. Um, she should have been in school. She goes, no, she didn't make it to first or second period. I said, please check with the rest of your friends, see if she made it to her any of her other periods. Um, At some point in this, I emailed one of her teachers asking, I actually emailed a few of her teachers and two of them responded. One of them said, no, he, she did not make it to class and I checked her attendance for the rest of the day. She wasn't at school at all. Like he sent me a screenshot of like her attendance and it said zero, zero, zero. You zero. still have that on the phone? Yes. Okay. Uh, if you need to know what app, I'll tell you what Got app. It. It's, it's a special school app. Got it. Um, he said she was missing all day. And at this point, I start to panic and freak out because that can't be the case. She was dropped off. Uh, I had to go check her attendance at school, but the office had closed already. Okay. The lights were off. I could see a student sitting in there in the darkness, but I couldn't see any of the administrators or anybody in the office. Lights were off, everything was closed. They wouldn't allow me in. I think at this point the teacher had responded to me and told me she didn't make it to school at all. I start having like a freak out panic attack. And 
Are you still just you at this point? Is it you and Stefan? It's me and my sister. And I want to say one of is Catherine. Um, I start panicking. And, and I think at this point I call Stefan and I tell him, hey, because she didn't make it. She's not, she's absent today. She, she, there's no attendance of her at all today. I'm like, right now. And he said, okay, I'll be there. And he came to the office. And there for like three, three hours, I think. Um, eventually I contact one of my friends whose husband works for, or ex-husband works for OCP or for you guys. Or for yeah. Okay. And I messaged him and I talked to him and I asked him what I should be doing because you guys aren't responding quick enough. Um, who's, would you know his name? Where he works? Yes. Uh, Nick Mann. Okay. Or Mahon. Do you sure. know what he does here? I think he works for SWAT. Okay. Sure. Figure it out. Yeah. Um. He tell you to wait. I can't remember anymore. Um. I think he let us know that there were other kids missing in the area, which is why you guys weren't responding quick enough. Um, I think an eight and a nine year old had gone missing around the same time too at, at a playground. They forgot to tell, they didn't tell their mom they were going to the playground or something like that. Um, so all the cops had, were over there on that side of Hunter's Creek. My sister's boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, whatever he is, thought it would be a good idea to go to the park and talk to a cop there and see if he could bring a cop back and that's what he did okay. um and then at that point that's when the cops started asking us questions taking a report um interviewing me they interviewed stefan they asked stefan um to take them back to the location where he dropped them off and he showed them wherever he dropped her off um, they were looking for cameras along the path, and um, I don't think they found any cameras along the way to okay. see if there was any video recordings. I think... Did Stefan go with them in their patrol cars, or did he drive himself when they followed? How did that work? I think he went with them in the patrol car. Okay. Then they came back. And then... That's it. Everything was done. The cops were done. We were done. What time? You remember what time that was on Monday? It was after dark. It was say eight o'clock. What did you guys go do after that? We were in separate cars. Me and Stefan. Okay. I ugly cried on the way home. I shouldn't have been driving. But I ugly cried on the way home, and I went straight home. And then the first thing I did was call Fox 35 News to see if we can like air some missing children information out there. Um, when you say ugly crime, just overly emotional tears, makeup running, or is there like what? What is your meaning of ugly crime? Sobbing, where I couldn't see the road, and I shouldn't have been driving. Like I was swerving. Makes sense. <sighs> did Fox 35 come out to your house, or what was their response? They responded the following day. I think we did a Zoom video interview. Did Stefan follow you home? I don't know if he followed me, but he, he drove home, yeah. Um, I mean, was it within a reasonable time when you got there? Like, yes, yes, oh. yes. Um, drove home. We waited there. We didn't know what to do. Um... I stayed up late. I think I called Fox 35. What else did I do? 
I think I, I had to eventually eat and take my medication. He told me he was going to go out cruising that night to go look for her. And I said, I even questioned that. I asked him, are you sure it's a good idea? You should probably sit tight. Um, let's just wait to see if she comes home. Um, and he said he was going to take a drive out. I had completely forgotten about him wanting to take the drive or that he actually did it. And it wasn't confirmed to me until the following day where agents came to the house and we sat in the car for a good amount of time. And I noticed the chair was adjusted. And I said, did you drive my car? And he said, yeah, remember I said I was going out last night. To That's right, you did say that. Um, Can you tell me where he looked? I think he set up and down 192. And I said, why there? And he's like, I don't know, I'm just looking. I was just trying to find, trying to look anywhere. And I'm just like, okay. Um, Did he say if he found anything or talked to anybody or just roamed? Yeah, roamed. <sighs> when you felt, when you were getting ready for bed, you were tired, emotional. Were you falling asleep when he left, or were you already asleep when he left? I was already asleep when he left. Okay, did you sleep downstairs? Yeah. In your bedroom? Yeah. When you woke up, was he already awake, or was he still sleeping? He was asleep in his bedroom upstairs. The guest bedroom? Yeah. Okay. Did you take your medication that night? I did. What did you guys do Tuesday? Or just you, you guys, if you're not together, you're not together. What's the timeline on Tuesday? Tuesday, he slept. I woke up early and started making phone calls to like the National Hotline for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, I called the number that the sheriff's office had given me um, to see if they had any information. And they let me know that she was like the invest, uh, like the, what did she say she was? I don't remember what she said her position was, but she had just gotten into the office and was just starting to work on it, so she didn't have any anything new for me. Um, her name was Bonnie Mitchell, I remember that. Um, she asked me to send her some photos. Uh, the National Exploited Children's Hotline Place asked me for photos as well. Um, I think at this point, um, I had asked my friends and family to start contacting news outlets to try to get as much attention on this as possible. Um, uh, I had a lot of phone calls coming in, and I was picking all of them up, hoping that any of them could help me. But it ended up being news reporters. Or people who had sought to see my phone on the f uh, my phone number on a flyer and was trying to give me suggestions. Um, somebody letting me know that they took flyers all the way to Orlando International Airport and posted them all over the place in case she was being trafficked. They suggested that I go to Amtrak and Greyhound. Uh, I had my sister making all these runs for me. I didn't leave the house to do any of this. Stuff and still sleep. Yeah. Eventually, reporters come to the house and do an interview, and at this point, Stefan was awake. I did an interview with them, and then Stefan was crying in the background, and I said, Stefan, do you want to do the interview? Um, you can if you want, and he sat in front of the camera and did an interview where he cried. Do you know which news outlet that was with? I know there's a video on Fox 35 where With he him appeared sitting, to be on like a webcam. Yeah, that was Zoom. He was sitting in the Zoom. background for me. Okay. I, I know but that you had one. in-person interviews with reporters? Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was Channel 9. Okay. Um, yeah, Channel 9. And he spoke to them? Yes. Okay. 
and he ugly cried in front of the camera too so he was fucking fake sob crying are you saying that now or do you I'm saying that now I didn't think that at the time at the time I thought he was truly heartbroken and not that he had done all this shit to her Like, I, I look back at shit now, I'm just like, he was fucking lying, he was fucking faking. What else has he been lying to me about? I know he's like a master liar and manipulator because he's, he's done it to his parents, and he's told me and shown me the lies he's done to his parents. But I don't know why I never thought, n- not me. The lies are about money, they're about where he's at, what he's doing, like what's he... Yeah. All that. Um, to his parents? Yeah. He's stolen money from his parents. Um, they used to have a few thousand dollars hidden in like a closet for emergency fund kind of thing. And a few, during COVID, he sold like, he wanted RC cars. See, if he wants something, he's going to get it. Um, no matter what. So he wanted RC vehicles. Uh, they were remote control cars. Fancy ones. They were a few hundred dollars. And I'm poor. I know I can't afford it, and he's showing up at home with these things. And I asked him, where are you getting the money from? Because we don't have this money. He goes, oh, my dad. And I said, your dad gave you money? He goes, no, I took some from his closet. And I was like, like they have an emergency stash? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, he's going to notice when he's missing. And he's like, no, he won't. It's so much money in there, he won't notice at all. I've confirmed with Chris later on that he did notice money, but he never asked his son. Um... But I let him know, yeah, he was robbing you and just buying himself toys. He's also lied, most recently, he lied to his parents about where he would be. He told them he would be at his friend's house playing video or board games or something like that. But in reality, he came all the way to Kissimmee to hang out with us. Okay. Um, But you guys were together Wednesday? After all the interviews, and you stay Wednesday, would you? I know yes. we had some detectives go meet you guys Wednesday, I believe it was. Yeah. Um, were you guys in the house together until the detectives came? Yes. Uh, what was what kind of happened after the detectives came? Do you feel like everything starts to get blurry? Oh, I get it. Trust me. We've been um, in this office because, for like three days straight. Yeah, so I just don't remember what day you guys, what day I had conversation Tuesday with you guys. Tuesday night, Orange County detectives came out there because I ended up coming out Tuesday night. Yeah. I don't know if you remember seeing me or not that night. Okay. That was the first night we were at the apartment into the nighttime. Yeah, is that when you guys shut down the house for forensics? Yes. Okay. So. Tell us about that. Okay. Um. So earlier that day, I think Detective Hunt came, or somebody came, and asked Stefan for his cell phone. If he would willingly give it up so that they can look at it, or if they would need a warrant. And I remember him saying, should I have asked a warrant? Should I have... And I'm like, no, if you've got nothing to hide, give him your fucking phone. And um, I think we hung out in the house for a little bit, and then when you guys came in the evening... And you guys told us to wait outside and we waited in my car. He started getting very anxious and very panicky going, I want my phone back. I want my phone back. And I said, listen, at this point, it's their phone. It's theirs for fucking ever. I don't give a shit. We will buy you a new phone. It doesn't matter anymore. Whatever they need, they need. Like, let them look at it. And he's like, I just want my phone back. And I'm just like, do you, are you trying to make yourself more suspicious? Because like, you're... If you were to go demand your phone back right now, that would look suspicious as fuck. Like, what are you doing? Um, I'm thinking he's just getting impatient because he's bored and wants to play on his phone. And at one point, he takes my phone to start playing with it. I I give it up. And I said, here, play on my phone. Have fun. Because um, I think from my phone, he was trying to log into his emails, but he couldn't. Because you need, like, two-factor authentication from your own phone. And I'm just like, what are you trying to look at? And he's like, oh, my shipments, my packages. He's addicted to buying shit. Um, 
that's another thing. Me and his dad couldn't figure out where Stefan was getting money from to buy stuff since he's been unemployed the last two months, but he's constantly buying himself packages, buying himself things off of Amazon, buying himself things off the line. Is this stuff you can confirm, or you think he's doing this? What? Buying packages. I can confirm because I, I am linked to his Amazon account, okay. and his parents can confirm whatever UPS packages or whatever he's getting at home. Um, but I'm linked to his Amazon account. If you guys you guys have my phone, you'll see whatever shipment. I think most recently I did like birthday party. If you see birthday party stuff, that was me. But everything else, him. Um, he's constantly buying stuff and he doesn't have money. He keeps saying he's got money in his savings, but me and my dad, his dad called bullshit because he hasn't had, when he lived with us, he was struggling. His dad was helping him pay his bills, paying his rent, paying his gas, paying his insurance. Stefan was helping us, you know, supporting us by buying food and all that stuff. But I don't know what he did with the rest of his money. And I don't know where he's getting money from now. Um, okay. You were telling us that he was trying to log into oh, he's his trying, email. So he's trying to log phone. into his emails on his phone. And I said... Two-factor authentication, you can't do anything. You're just going to have to wait till you get your phone back. Um, what else? We waited in the car. I think at this point, when I noticed that forensics was locking down the house and you guys said we couldn't come back, I told him to call his dad. Because I had a feeling something... Y'all knew something and it was going to come down on him. And I'm just like, they're focusing on the wrong person. They have the wrong person. In my head, I'm convinced you guys are just, that you had the wrong person. I wanted to think that he was good. Um, Before we get ahead of that, what is the conversation like between you two when you're in the car? Because y'all were in there for a good while while we were, trying to figure things out at your apartment complex or your condo. What's the conversation like inside that car? Um, I'm trying to think back to what exactly we were talking about. I know I... I just, I remember, I remember late in the evening, like, when you guys let us know we couldn't come back, and I called his dad, or we called his dad, um, I started saying to him, like, I think they're focusing in on you, like, we need to call your dad, and I think we need to get you a lawyer, um, I feel like they're focusing on the wrong person, and he kept saying the same thing, he kept repeating what I was repeating, that, um, they're focusing on the wrong person. Um, they're wasting time there. Um, How do you feel when you say he needs a lawyer? He didn't believe me. Like, when I told them, like, don't you see forensics is closing down the house? They fucking know something, or there's something, like, they know something. Something's happening. They wouldn't be locking down the house this way if, if, if they didn't have suspicions of something. But in my, I wasn't thinking, I don't know why I wasn't thinking him. Like, I was just like, no, they've got the wrong guy. Um... He just kept, he just kept saying that they have the wrong guy, that that um, they're focusing on the wrong person and that we're wasting time and, and um, we call his dad, we tell his dad to come down here and his dad did come down here and met us at a hotel. That was another thing. I don't have that much money. I live off a of disability. Um, I couldn't afford to put us up on a hotel. Like when you guys said that we couldn't return, I was like, I didn't know where to go. I was trying to think if any family member would have a spare room or anything like that, and 
not that would not that could take the three of us or the when I say three of us I mean him and dog. Um And I know at my mom's house, we wouldn't have been welcome. My mom does not like Stefan. She's never liked Stefan. So I knew that our only option was to go to a hotel, but I couldn't afford it. So we called Chris and Chris met us at a hotel uh, by, uh, by Disney. Okay. Off of Western Way. And that's where we went. Um, we got there pretty late. We checked in. I used the restroom and I was um, getting ready for bed or getting like laying down in bed probably around 3.30, 3.45 in the morning and I fell asleep. Stefan was already asleep at this point. Did you go straight to sleep when you got in or just kind of drifted off as you were falling asleep? Uh, like you went to the bathroom and he goes straight to bed? He was already in bed before I went to the bathroom. Okay. I was on my phone for a little bit. He was laying in bed snoozing. I went to use the restroom. I was in the restroom for quite a while because I had like a, a terrible cell. Um, when I came back out, he was asleep. At least I thought he was asleep. But, um... <sighs> His dad stayed with you guys? Not in the hotel room. He stayed in a different room on the same floor. Okay. Um, the following morning, I wake up, I think, around 9 o'clock in the morning. And Stefan's not there. And I remember thinking, he left again without his phone and didn't tell anyone where he was going. That's suspicious as fuck again. Why is he trying to... Well, we took his phone, so he got a new phone? He didn't get the new phone until later that day, where his dad woke up, came to our hotel room, mm -hmm. and then handed him a phone. Okay. And said, here, have this phone in the meantime until you get your old phone back. Um, oh, so you're just saying he's out and about with no phone. Yeah, he's out and about with no phone, so there's no way for us to contact him. There's no way for us to... I didn't know if he even knew how to get back to the hotel. Because I drove that night. He's a little oblivious to when it comes to directions. Um, so I was just like, he couldn't even figure out how to get here. But he rolled in around 11.15, rolled in with a cup of Wawa, and said, oh, I'm so sorry, I was just driving around. I grabbed um, some Wawa on 182 and got lost. I didn't know how to get back to the hotel, um, but I'm here now. And I'm just like, detectives are about to show up. What the fuck would have happened if they showed up and you weren't here? Like, you would have been a, a fugitive. Like, what are you doing? Um, and he was just apologetic about not telling anyone anyone where he went. Um, but you know, I mean, he had a lot of walk up and he said he was up at 192. Yeah, but in reality, I know that he truly took my car in the middle of the night to Northport, Florida, and was down there for an hour and came back. I didn't suspect that at all. Okay. I literally thought, I'm like, oh, this man, we were right next to like a Publix, uh, I'm sorry, a Target. So I'm thinking, oh, he's probably like stretch shopping, just looking at stuff. He likes to browse. But it's like maybe he's in there somewhere. But I didn't have a car. I had, I, I couldn't go out looking, right? And also detectives were coming, so I didn't want to leave. Um, detectives eventually show up. Um, actually, just we were in the, yeah, we were in the hotel room for a while. Um, He went back to sleep and slept. I took a little snooze for a little bit that morning, and then I got up, and then I went downstairs to the lobby, and I saw Chris. And Chris asked if I wanted some lunch, so we went to the hotel bar and ate some lunch. We brought up some lunch back for Stefan, told him to eat a little bit. Um, when he woke up, he took like two bites. Um, Then detective showed up. We went downstairs. They let us know that there was a press conference happening, that which we already had an idea was was going to happen. And they told us they would give us a ride and escort us to the to your conference yeah. here. 
Uh, and that you guys would let us in the back way so that <laughs> media wouldn't see us. But in reality, now I know. That was just to interview guys with us. <laughs> but, um, yeah, then we showed up here and got separated. Haven't heard from him since. Haven't spoken to him since. Have no interest in speaking to him at all. What have you done since? Like, where, where, did you go back to the hotel? Did you stay somewhere else? No. Um, so after the interview and all that stuff, uh, Chris took me to my sister's house. Uh, I've been at my sister's house ever since. Go ahead. Um, yesterday I went out for a little bit to go to Target to try to take my mind off of things. I went to Target to go get myself a toothbrush and deodorant, things that I didn't have because I left the house the last second. Um, I also went um, to my ex-husband's wife's mom's house. Sold me. They just kept me company. They made they had they made lunch. Um, then I went back to my sister's house, and I've just been pretty much there ever since. Not when I went to Target, I decided like, oh shit, I shouldn't be out in public. People could recognize me. It could either be good or bad. What people could tell me. I've already had people recognize me uh, in my community, mm-hmm. and dealing with people's heavy emotions and them coming to me and crying and telling them telling me they're so sorry and how they feel is so heavy because like it's I just have to kind of stand there and take their emotions and like I don't know it's just it's so heavy when I realized that this, these these are the interactions I was having in public I'm like I need to stay home because I just can't I can't carry anyone else's emotions right now I have my own to deal with like my own, I don't want my own mental health suffering right now, or for me to spiral and end up back being hospitalized. So what, um, what's your, when did you meet Steven or Stefan? I met Stefan in 2017. We both worked for Eco Homes, a real estate company. I did appointments, and he worked in the office doing like warranty work. Um, we met as coworkers. We became really good friends. We were best friends for like a year, and then eventually I asked him if he wanted to hook up, and he said sure. You said 17, 18, did you live in Orlando, Kissimmee, where were you guys staying then? Kissimmee. And did you guys live together in 17? He technically lived at his parents' house, but he was staying at my house all the time. Okay. Same house you're in now or a different house? Wait, I take it back. In 2017, he wasn't staying over my house. It started in 2018 when he started when we started hooking up and uh, he started sleeping over my house. Okay. And what, what was your next question? Was that in the current... Yes. House you live in now? Yes. Okay. Have you? How long have you lived in that house? On and off. Because at one point we moved close to where his parents live right now. In um, They live in Northport, Florida, yeah. Sarasota County. I lived in Port Charlotte, which is Charlotte County, the county right next door. Um, we had an apartment there for like six to eight months. We moved down there because... Again, Stefan was promised a job and that fell through. So we supported ourselves in this tiny apartment for a little while until I ran out of funds. Do you remember what year that was? 2020. You, what, so yeah. when did you live in Port Charlotte in 2020? I don't remember what month I moved in, but I remember moving out in November. Of 2020? Yeah. Okay. So it, it was... It was some... April, May. 
this one's going to be fine. We can look up if we need to later. Uh, 2 At the same time, no. But okay. I've had ex-husbands and ex-boyfriends live in that same house before. Got it. Poor Charlotte in 20, sometime in 2020 for a few months. Yeah. And then you came back to the same house? After Port Charlotte, I went back to my mom's house for a little while. Where's that? In Hunters Creek, Florida. Got it. Um, even before Port Charlotte, actually, the few months before I was in Port Charlotte, I was living at my mom's house. With Stephan. Around March 20. Decided he wanted to renovate the house and possibly sell it, so he told us to get out. So March 2020, so around COVID time, like two weeks after COVID was announced, uh, I moved in with my mom, okay. and I lived with her for a little bit. And then the Port Charlotte house happened, uh, apartment happened. We moved to Port Charlotte, were there for a few months, came back to live with my mom, was there for a few months, and then I decided to move back. Um, he was moving out and like getting an RV and like living the RV life. Yeah. Um, so he needed somebody to take care of the house for him. So I said, yeah, I would do it, of course. So I moved in. I moved into his bedroom downstairs, the master bedroom. Um, eventually, Stefan did come. few years. Um, it wasn't until like June of last year that I can go upstairs to the guest bedroom upstairs because I just um, he's not a very clean guy. He's kind of a little hoarder and a collector. So just my house was always a mess and never the way that I wanted it to look. Um, or the clutter just gave me anxiety. So um, I asked him to move upstairs and he did. Uh, and he lived upstairs until March, I'm sorry, until December of last year. And then he moved to Northport, Florida with his parents because they had promised him a job, but that fell through. So we were in the process of trying to get him to come back up here to get his job back at Disney and for him to move back into the house for a little bit. And I'm not sure long term. I know temporarily I was willing to accept him back. Was that something out of convenience for him because you were um, A little bit of both. We missed him. Um, and I wanted to help him out, like make it easy, like give him a place, like a base a base to start at and then for him to start looking for something else afterwards uh, on his own. But, um, yeah. You obviously relationship 
talk a lot? Is she a secretive teenager? What is like your kind of day to day with her? I would have said a normal, a normal relationship. She, she, I asked, she would tell me. She was. I didn't think she was hiding anything from me. I didn't think she was lying to me about anything, but obviously she had secrets. I mean, the hindsight. I mean, all the stuff you found out over the past couple of days. We're going. Like, Taking that out of the picture, your relationship with her. Okay. Like not not, not say, looking back saying, okay, I was being lied to. Like up until you found out some things that you've been told, you guys had an open communication relationship. You yeah. talk about everything. Life. Yeah. What? If anything, she was a little bit more open with Stefan because she told him about a boy she had a crush on. Okay. And um, that his name was. And um, she described him. And Stefan's like, are you aware that she has a crush on a boy? I said, no. He's like, yeah. She told me that he's tall and um, that she likes his fluffy hair. Um, when was this? Do you remember when this conversation happened? Within the last week sometime, but I'm not oh, sure. Okay. Like, within... So we saw... Like, Within a week of that Sunday, um, I'm not sure if he had had if she had told him via phone chat. It must have been via phone, like phone convert, like a. We don't FaceTime. We Google Meet. The Android the, version, the Android FaceTime, version of FaceTime, yeah. yeah. Um, so we would Google Meet often. Um, sometimes when we get home from school, just and just talk all day, or sometimes I even talk all day. We would just bullshit. I would be doing my own thing, he would be doing, we're just keeping each other company on the phone. Um, and I think in one of those conversations, she told him that she had had a crush on a boy. But I checked those text messages with that boy and nothing seemed to be weird either. So. But how did he, I mean, it could be new. I mean, you see, she sees a guy at school, she thinks it's attractive, he shows her attention. I mean, she shows How did he take it? Was he like, and... I want you to think back before you know things you know now. Like, did he seem concerned about her? Did he seem excited for her? Like, she's, she's starting to, you know, be a kid and have crushes and everything else. Like, he, seemed, was... he seemed happy for her. Okay. Um, he's like, yeah, did you hear this? This is super cute. And I was like, oh. I hadn't. She hadn't told me. And I, and I wondered, I'm like, why didn't she tell me? Why didn't she tell him and not me? Like, I want to know who she's got a crush on. But maybe it's because I told her that she, she, she had a rule. She wasn't allowed to date for a few years okay. until like I think I had said 16 or something like that but I didn't want her dating so then there, your relationship or there was open obviously she's a child she's not going to share everything yeah um, with him it seems like she has a very open relationship with him they talk they hang out So it'd be okay with you if they went out and did things together outside if you were at work or something. So the living situation, the living situation with them, I'll be honest, seems weird. It's weird to me. She's got a bedroom downstairs. What's kind of the the mindset or the the thought process, the communication you've had with Stefan about? You know, she's not going to sleep in her bed, but you guys are going to go sleep in the guest bedroom. So, originally, the plan was that all three of us were going to sleep in my bed together. Um, and I'm not just saying Sunday, I mean like... Oh. Okay. So, I had had a rule. She wasn't allowed to sleep in his bedroom at all. Like... No sleepovers, no nothing. For a very long time. For years. Um, Since we're pausing, yeah. what brought that on? Was that like a request of his? Like, can we sleep in the same bed? Request of hers? Or are you just saying... And me being super paranoid not to trust anyone. Um, for the longest time, even though he treated her well, I still looked at him on, you know, like side eye, like making sure, like, is that normal? Is this okay? That that looks normal. Okay. I, I wanted to make sure that nothing was happening and that I was missing something, but I was. 
but um he never requested I'm sorry repeat the question then so I guess I'm what you said like you had a rule like obviously we know now they've you know slept in the same bedroom together and everything else I'm sure you're questioning a lot of things that like you haven't been told or that are going on the thought process of them sleeping in the same bedroom caused you to say that you had a rule for the longest time where they couldn't yeah I have a son he's a lot younger than her he's four but I guess I if I was dating somebody or had somebody over I would never establish and this is just me a rule he can't sleep in the bed with her or she's not going to be it wouldn't even be a thought process for me so that's why I ask because I wouldn't think of it even as an option yeah so when you say you had a rule I guess I'm asking what prompted the rule um, sleepovers before yeah like you want to watch movies and eat snacks can we do that I'm like no 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 we can all watch movies down here together we can all sleep down here together um up until I mean up until up until June together all the time so we were always she would sleep in the middle I would sleep on this side he would sleep on the other side um it wasn't until June that he got his own bedroom and I sent him upstairs that's where the that's where the requests for sleepover started okay. Um, and I, t I kept telling her, no, 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 no. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable with that. Um, but eventually at some point, like, we, just, we really want to watch, I forgot what movie it was. They really wanted to watch something and I was really tired. And I said, okay, fine. Um, go ahead, but this can't happen often. Um. But honestly, I I think I can count on one hand how many times that's happened, and it hasn't been many times that I've allowed her to have a supper party with him, to be alone in a, in a bed with him. I'm usually around all the time. I Up until two weeks ago, you know, I was pretty much at home all the time living on disability. Uh, if I wasn't at home, just, you know, we I was substitute teaching, but I was substitute teaching primarily at her school or at the school close by, but I'd make sure I'd get out around the same time and I'd get out in time to pick her up and take her. So she was with me pretty much all the time when she wasn't at school. Um, so yeah, after... When he's not there, where does she sleep? With me. She never sleeps in her room? No, always okay. with me. Quickly, do you know, and you may hate the question, but do you know, do you have any idea? We currently have upwards of probably 200 people working on fire. Right, the Orange County Sheriff's Office is involved, the Kissing Police Department's involved, St. Cloud Police Department, Osceola County Sheriff's Office, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, FBI. Okay. Yes suspicious circumstances so anybody who is somebody is involved yeah so regardless of the circumstances those people don't get to go home those people don't get to go back to their families those people don't get to live their lives and go back to their primary jobs of course. I know the sheriff has probably expressed to you that's his number one priority I'm sure the Cassini Police Department has expressed that to you our detectives this isn't something that's going to stop or go away yeah. Right. Anybody who knows something, anybody who may know something, will be brought into a room, will be talked to, whether they're guilty, whether they're innocent. Because our number one priority, our jobs have kind of stopped on any other things we have going on until it's fine, because that's the most important thing anybody has going on right now. But with that, a lot of people are going to feel that whatever happened, I can tell you, and I know Pete detectives expressed to you that the thought process at this point is this is a homicide investigation. Yeah. Based on the evidence I've seen, based on the videos I've seen, I do believe with that being said, and the reason I tell you that not to be an asshole, no. is because the thought process with us leads it in a different investigation, a different way. Meaning, whatever 
has already happened, yeah. right? We cannot change what happened most likely on Monday. We cannot change the fact that I believe Stefan killed her, right? All we can do now is find her as quickly as possible. On the 2% the chance we're wrong and that she is alive, that's phenomenal, right? That's the best thing that could happen. On the chance that we are 100% correct and she has passed away, finding her now versus later will bring closure to your family, will bring closer to everybody, regardless of how it happened or why it happened. Meaning, if you have an inclination, if you know where she's at, if his father knows, that doesn't mean those people get held accountable for what he did. It doesn't mean those people get held accountable for knowing what he did. It means we close out the investigation at you know what I mean? So a lot of times we go into rooms like this and we ask people questions. We say, hey, do you know what happened? Do you know what happened? And there's this fear of what happened already happened. I can't change that. So I'm not going to insert myself with knowledge because it's going to make me look bad. Regardless, at this point, I murdered her, right? He victimized her. He ruined her entire life from childhood until now. I think that there's probably some sense of guilt. And my fear is that sense of guilt is causing you to not want to assist in the location of her, not because you're a bad person, but because there's that sense of guilt that what was happening was happening under your roof. And now, by her being found, brings that all to your plate, and it doesn't. Oh no, if I knew anything, I would so tell you. I want to f***ing you, even if she's dead, because you guys tell me your suspicions, but I still, I'm not going to believe it until I have her body. So like, there are things, and the reason I say these things, and again, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but the reason I say these things is there's been a lot of things you've said, and a lot of things I've kind of researched between the Fox 35 story, between your initial statement to the police, a lot of things have changed. The initial statement to the police was you watched her get dragged, you watched her leave, you knew exactly what she was wearing. Can I can I tell you Absolutely. my thought process on yes, that or where I came from with that? I was handed this form and I'm like, where do I start? What do I write? And somebody say somebody said, Tell them what you saw. And so I started with I saw. And then I wrote out what I wrote out. But it wasn't until later I was like, wait, I didn't see her. I assumed that I saw her. I assumed that I heard her. But I didn't. In reality, I didn't see her. I only saw him. And I heard something in the kitchen, but I don't know who that was. Which we've talked about today. But I guess my con there's other concerns. The police have showed you their hand. They said, Stefan, we want your phone. Stefan, we want to talk to you. We are going to lock down your residence. You can't go back inside. Me? I don't care if it's the love of my life sitting next to me. I don't care if it's maternal grandma. If the police come and take my mom's phone and my son's disappearance, I'm not going to offer my mom a lawyer. That's nuts to me. That, to me, shows you prioritizing stuff. Because at that point, you became more worried about him being falsely accused than any... Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Whether or not that's what you felt, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. People having lawyers is their constitutional right. That is a thing that everybody is afforded. But for somebody who's going through what you are going through, to offer him a lawyer leads me to believe that there may have been a conversation there may have been knowledge or there may have been some inclination that you had, whether it be his involvement, her location, or something to where in your mind there's guilt. I promise you. Because like, you offering him a lawyer is very weird. I know. I know. I. That was still me under the assumption that I think at one point... No, at one point you guys interviewed me and when you guys showed me the picture of her, I believed the sexual stuff, but I didn't want to believe that he had done anything evil to her. I'm like, no, what if she, what if he did this stuff fine? 
but what if she's still missing out there? What if somebody took her? I still wanted to believe in his, I, I believed him, I believed his whole story. So I was just like, I, I kept repeating that part. I'm just like, what if, what if she did get dropped off? What if she got abducted? What if she's missing? Um, but that was me assuming that you guys had the wrong guy. I wanted to think he was a good guy still, but clearly he's not. After everything you guys have told me and have shown me, I know he's the worst person on this face of the we earth right now. We know that now. We know he's a piece of shit now. You know. But you didn't know that then. I didn't. Then you offered a guy who the police suspected, suspected of kidnapping, abducting, assisting the disappearance. And then we don't have to round table that. You went back to you, what you just said is the sex stuff is fine. It's not yeah, fine. Hold on, hold on. I know every relationship is different, and I know everybody's family is different. I won't ask you, but going on your going back on your, has he expressed interest in I would use the word weird. I'm not gonna shame anybody for what they they like different sexual pleasures, different sexual experiences, different kinks that involve things you weren't comfortable with. The only thing he's ever expressed to me was like anal. Okay. Um, he had an anal kink and like butts. Okay. But that was something I was never comfortable with or doing. And I let him know that, like, like that's something. something. So, you guys slept in the same bed together. Steven was a big portion of your life at one point. Stefan was a big portion of your life at one point. And this is not me coming at you as a person or a bad person because shit happens in the past, in the past, in the past. We can't change the past. Has he ever expressed to you any? Never. Never. Has he ever made comments, statements about made you feel different? No. Okay. When you guys slept in the same bed together, in the middle, did you ever wake up and find them cuddling? Did you ever wake up and find them closer than you thought they should be? They would. They would snuggle. Yeah. Okay. But I. I we all snuggle. I didn't think that that was that problem. So if you guys are sleeping in the same bed and she's in the center, you've woken up and they're snuggling, they're under the same blanket, they're not under the same blanket? No. But just like... She's got her own blanket. Sp spooning for what? Mm. How, what is snuggling to you? Because to me, snuggling, spooning. Big spoon, little spoon. He would lay down like this and she would be right here in his... in, in the nook. Okay. Um. How do you guys sleep? You guys sleep clothed, unclothed. I sleep clothed. clothed. Yeah. Shirt, pants, pajama sets. Yes. Everybody. Uh, I sleep in like my everyday clothes. Okay. Uh, on pajamas or baggy t-shirts and shorts. Okay. And Stefan would sleep. Uh, with his t-shirt or boxers, sometimes with his pants on. But he didn't have pajamas. Okay, so they would snuggle, sometimes him being in his boxers. He would wake up and she'd be in the nook of his arm, essentially in a cuddling position. And you never found that weird. No. Okay. Again, you and I may find things different. Why? And I don't want you to look back on it, because now you know you victimized her for a long time. Right? Under your roof. With you home, most likely, because you said you're always home. You just got this job. You've been living off disability. I know the Kansas City Police Department has showed you pictures. I know they've verbally explained you some pictures. I can tell you that today, they're still downloading his Google Drives. We are still going through his social medias, his cloud-based servers, and everything else. And we can now piece back her victimization in your house under your care to 2020. I believe we've gone far as far back as in when she. So when I ask, they've woken up cuddling, did you find things suspicious, did you have an open relationship, did she talk to you, has he made inappropriate statements? It's almost like cheating, right? Like, have you ever been cheated on? Okay. Somebody can only cheat on somebody for so long until they fuck up, or until something comes out, or somebody says something, right? So we go back to 2020, we're looking at a minimum of three and a half years. Three and a half years where I'm sure you guys are sexually active. Yes. <laughs>
So for three and a half years under your care in your house, not only was he being sexually active with you, he had a sexual relationship. It's an emotional thing and I know it sucks to hear, but where I'm coming from is it seems like something that you can't hide forever. You guys live in a small space, close quarters, you sleep in the same bed, you guys all talk, you guys all share things, you're an observant person for the most part I assume. Outside of taking medications and going to sleep, it seems very difficult. A lot of grown ass adults can't hide an affair with somebody who doesn't live with them, yeah. let alone somebody who does live with them. So at a certain point, I do believe you became aware of what was going on. No. And when I say that, it doesn't mean you're in trouble. It doesn't change. I know, but... But I do believe that a reasonable person, and I consider you a reasonable person, right? Do you think you're a reasonable person? Yeah. Would be aware that under her roof, sexual relations. The videos, the text messages, the images, they are all documented forever. This has been an ongoing thing. And at her age, I think she probably thought they were in a relationship. She probably thought they were in love because he her male attention, right? She just started liking boys, right? She just got a crush. Up until then, her crush. At the same time, you guys are sleeping in the same bed together. You guys are all cohabitating. She's not sleeping in her room. But you felt the need to establish a rule that they couldn't sleep in the same room. But when you establish that rule, for three years, she's already been dating him, essentially. Whether no that's idea. legal or not. I have no idea. So I truthfully believe, and this is my belief, this is I'm not speaking for other detectives, not speaking for the sheriff's office, the state police department, or any other agency I've said. This is Kevin's belief. I believe that you became aware of your sexual relationship. I think at a certain point throughout this relationship, you became aware of it. And for whatever reason, your reasons are your reasons, whether it was discussed that it would stop, whether it was discussed how it would go, that you feel some sense of guilt. A lot of the news statements you've given Kind of, again, my opinion only, I don't speak for anybody else, whether it's in this room or out of this room, bother me. It seems like some of your emotion, up until this room, I think some of the emotion in this room is sincere. I think a lot of it's because I'm being an asshole. I'm telling you things you don't want to hear that shouldn't be said out loud. But when you talk to the news, when you talk to deputies, it feels, based on my experience in this job, that it's not sincere. I feel like some of your sadness is not real sadness. I feel like when you gave the interview with Fox 35, it was not sincere. Looking at that video one time, I didn't feel like your cries were sincere. And I'm not saying that because you're a bad person. I feel like sometimes people struggle to show real emotion when they're aware of what the truth is. So it has to be fake. This is optimized for the past, let's say five years, right? But her going missing, her disappearance, if you have knowledge of how it happened, where it happened, an inclination, that emotion's not gonna feel sincere because you're already aware of what happened. I would it's almost because I lie knew at that point. if I knew anything, I promise you, I would tell you. Like I am willing to take a lie detector test, whatever the fuck you want, but I don't know anything. He's never mentioned anything. I've never seen any signs. I tried watching her like a hawk. I thought I was doing a good job, but I wasn't. I was oblivious to the, everything. Four years? Minimum. That's just how fat, that far back the clown goes. <laughs> and I, I find it hard to believe for me that you were so worried about how many pills she took at night, but not where she slept or what relationship she was His interest in her. I thought it, we were all safe. I thought because he hadn't shown me anything 
so far, like, everything seems fine. Like, he seems... Like, he treated her like... Like he treats you? In his mind? So now he's in jail because of what we found on his phone. Not because somebody came forward and reported that he was abused. No, I know. She's not old enough to consent. She's not old enough to have a thought process to even want anything that was happening to her. It's <laughs> abuse. So he's in jail for that. But something caused what Right? We certainly she didn't die naturally. She didn't overdose. She didn't have a heart attack. We circled murder on Monday. Something had to cause that. He's been having unrestricted sexual activity for a long time. He's getting what he wants from her, probably from you, and who knows whoever else, right? So it's not like he woke up or went to bed Sunday and he was like, you know what? I'm done with this, but I'm going to kill her. Something happened. People don't just wake up and like, you know what? They leave people, they break up with people, but usually things cause people to snap. Now what, you know what, and I'm in trouble, or I feel like I'm gonna, or him being out, we can go even worse. She's pregnant. That's what questions last night led me to believe when we started talking about her period. I was told that her and her friend, and granted, I'm, I'm, I'm male, never had a period, but that somebody found it weird that they were no longer on the same cycle. Could be different because she's a teenage girl. Could be that she missed her period. Have you ever found a pregnancy test at home that wasn't yours? I have two underneath the kitchen, the bathroom sink, but I haven't seen if they're still there or not. Okay. But you haven't seen any used ones in the trash? No. Their relationship hasn't changed? Mm, no. Okay. So what do you think happened Sunday? Other than him killing her, what do you think made him snap? I don't know. Theories, I, I, I keep hearing Tell me your theories, because here's the deal. We don't go home until she's found. No, I know, I know. So what are your theories? What I've heard is, what if, what if she upset him and threatened to tell me and say that she was going to tell me and he needed to shut that down? That's the only thing. What do you think? You don't want to believe he killed her. I want to believe she's still alive and that she got kidnapped, but that doesn't seem like that's the well, case that's not at all. Yeah. I know. I know my brain just wants to believe something else. I just want to believe she's still alive and she's out there. <laughs> Tell you he fucked up. No, he he acted so normal that day. He was like, I'm so impressed. We got out of the house so early. Like she didn't. She made great time. We had so much time to go to McDonald's, but she didn't want to. His story was so fun. Like every detail was so believable. <laughs> he's just been lying this whole time. Like he's. What about that day in the car when you offered him a lawyer? Did he disclose anything to you there that made you feel like, oh fuck, he needs a lawyer? No. He acted, he kept, he kept, like, 
he kept acting like he didn't know what was happening and I'm like don't you see forensics don't you see they took your phone like something's happening like I think they're gonna pin this on you and I'm like in my head I'm going they have the wrong guy like they're they're just honing in on the last person who saw her but no you guys do more you never said what did you do I've never asked him any of that I still even even up until when we got here to the police station I, 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 I was just I was convinced that he hadn't done anything to her at all because of him or because of not wanting to believe she's deceased because of him because I, I thought he was a good guy so up until this morning you still think that it's not no 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 I'm okay. talking about the other day up until up until when we took him yes okay. I forgot what day of the week that was so we're still going through his phone his drives like I told you all the socials we can date back to 2020 based on the videos it appears that was the start of the victimization okay are we going to find anything in his phone with you Has there ever been a request for the two of you to participate in sexual activity with him? No. Regardless of you saying no or yes? No, he's never asked that. Okay. If we find pictures like that, is that going to surprise you? Like if I'm in his Google Drive, if I have a sex crimes detective, a computer person look at his phone, uh -huh. and they tell me, hey Kevin, I found a picture, Engaged in sexual activity or borderline sexual activity is that going to surprise you yes because that doesn't exist okay at any time during the course of your relationship has he expressed that he has ever had sex with a child no not, not a child but when he told me when he was in high school he graduated high school like later like older than 18 Okay. He dated somebody younger than 18. I think she was 15. Um, but he, I don't know how old he was, 19, 20. But he was an older kid in high school. Um, he graduated late. Um, but he had a really young girlfriend. Her name was Kendall. Um, and I thought that was weird. I was like, that's a little too young. He goes, no, it's fine. We were in high school. Everything was normal. Her, her parents uh, loved me. Blah, 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 blah. But that's the only one. Have you ever gone through his phone? Who me? Okay. If you had to, knowing Stefan, knowing where he lives, knowing where he goes, how he conducts his life, give me your top five. Because I know you, you've had to have thought about it. If you haven't thought about it, that's another weird thing I got. Since Monday, right? We told you on Wednesday that we think he did it. Yeah. So from Wednesday till today, it's about 48 hours. Give me your top five places you think are possibilities based on knowing him, based on knowing his path of travel. Where do you think, it doesn't have to be based on evidence, just in your gut, give me your top five places where you think he could. In this area, doesn't have to be this area. No, I know. Anywhere you want. I'm saying in this area, I have no idea. Orlando, Kissimmee, no idea where he could have taken her. But his trip to Northport is weird as fuck. I feel like in Northport, he knows more people. He has more friends. There could be a place and somewhere there he could have stashed her. I, you guys said he went into a, a storage unit. That would be another place to look, but um, there's plenty of woods around his house. Around that exit is is kind of secluded. Like when you say his house, you mean his parents' house? His parents' house, yeah. You've been there. Have you seen the property? <laughs> yeah, I've been there before. Do they have land, or is it in like a neighborhood? So. It's not a neighborhood because they don't have HOA. You just buy the plot of land and build it. Um, they don't have many neighbors. Okay. Um, or last I saw, I think there was a neighbor building right next door, but I don't know if they're done yet. Um, <sighs> I'm 
feel like he had more, there would have been more spots, more spots in, in Northport for her to be dumped. Because from what you guys have told me, he went to St. Cloud, he went to 192. Could you guys tell where he turned on one night on any of these roads? It just that he was on the main road? I didn't think he ever, like, even knew where St. Cloud was because we've never driven down that way ever. And you live in Kissimmee, right? Yeah, I know, but... To me, he's never had a reason to ever drive down to St. Cloud. Like, ever. There's no store or anything he goes to down there. Everything is in Kissimmee. Or Orlando by the mall. Florida mall? Yeah. Orlando mall? Yeah, Florida well, Florida. I sent, I sent the last detective, like, three spots. I, I could have recalled him telling me he, he, he wanted to visit. Um, Monday... Uh, when he left the house in the afternoon and got the flat tire, he had mentioned a, a few of those shops, so I, I sent them over to you guys. Um, but there's honestly nowhere I can think of. We've never gone to... The only wooded area that we've ever gone together would be Shingle Creek Regional Park. Um, where the Pioneer Village is. Okay. Um, that whole trail there, we, we used to, we had scooters, and he had like a, like a, an electric skateboard kind of thing. We would, we would all cruise, like we would all cruise the creek, uh, explore. We've taken a canoe up that creek before. Um, then the Kissimmee Trail, there's a trail that runs right behind my house that goes, starts right behind my house and goes all the way to that bridge on John Young Parkway that says Kissimmee on it. That whole trail, we've done that as well. That's the only, that's the only places I could think that like he may have gone because that's where I know I've gone with him before. But anywhere else, I, I have no idea. So our ERT team, so emergency response team, is just a group of people who search areas. Doesn't have to be wooded, can be wooded, can be swampy. They've been out for three days. They're going to be out all weekend. They will eventually, whether it's today, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's in 2026, I don't think you want that to take too long. All right, I'm sure you'd like to have a funeral. I'm sure you'd like to have some kind of memorial service. <laughs> the last thing you want is for us to call you in a year and say, hey, we found remains. We don't know if <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. That may not be something you thought about till just now, but I can tell you being someone who investigates homicide, that is something that everybody has to come think about eventually. If you can think of anything that would assist us in making that happen for you today versus two years from now, regardless of why you know or how you know, we need it. No, I know. If I knew anything, I would tell you right now. I promise. I want her back so bad. communication been like with his father since this? I've, I've, I've limited contact over the last two days because I just 
I know too much and I don't, I don't want to tell them anything. You don't want to tell them what we've told you or you don't want to tell them what you know? No, I don't want to tell them what you guys have told me. I can't, I can't, I don't want to share any, I, it's, it's so difficult because I've known them for just as long as I've known the stuff and they've actually, they feel like absolute shit right now. I know that they kind of got into a fight because Chris or are you sure we know our son? Are you sure we know our son? I don't think we know him at all. The mom was defending him, but now, now with everything, with the evidence on the phone coming out, they know. You know, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> We've talked to his dad. I mean, his dad knows as much as you know. He yeah. knows his son's a rapist. He knows his son's a murderer. <laughs> he's talked to us. He's been very open with wanting to help in any way he can. Whether that's technological, whether that's verbal. Yeah, he, he even had... I was with him when he turned in his knife to you guys. He remembered he had a knife on him and gave it to you guys. I thought that was... Have you talked to Chris about Stefan needing a lawyer? Yeah. When? I think when you guys showed me the the the, the photos. So we showed you photos of Stefan raping. The no. first thought you had was to ask his father if he should get a lawyer? No. I saw a picture. I didn't see the rape. I didn't know she was getting raped until yesterday. I saw the picture of the oral sex happening. And I, I knew that that was true, right? That's evidence. That's for real. That's fucking happening. But I kept thinking, they're going... I don't know why I kept... I, I can't tell you why my brain kept thinking, no, he didn't kill her. Not that he didn't kill her, but she's still missing. She's still out there. She was taken. Yes, he's done this to her, and that's not okay. But I swore she was still, I felt in my body she was still alive. She was still out there. I told Chris to get him a lawyer because I felt like you guys were chasing the wrong person. But you weren't. You're not. We showed you a picture. Of the picture you saw, she was giving a blowjob to a grown ass man. Who's and you told his dad to get him a lawyer. Missing, right? Yeah. Now you. But then you just thought she was missing. And we were showing you our investigative lead being raped. A blowjob is rape. consensual whether she wants to do it or not that is not consensual and you prioritized him again you prioritized him by offering him or telling his dad to get him a lawyer not what the fuck did he do not, hey we need to figure out what happened no let's protect Stefan I was in shock no that's not shock that is your natural instinct to protect Stefan Okay? And if that's naturally how you react, that's fine. But that goes into what I've been telling you this whole conversation is I don't believe a lot of the things you're saying and I don't believe a lot of the things you say you weren't aware of. And that is because you've now shown me twice that your first reaction, no matter what you were told or shown, missing and we're seizing the cell phone, and we're showing you pictures of her giving him a blowjob, your first reaction is to protect Stefan. So now, murdered by Stefan, you're aware of this, you were shown pictures of this, you were shown pictures of her body in his car with a seatbelt on, right? We have played it out for you. But now, now you're in a stage where he's in jail, you know she's passed away, and now you can feel emotion, right? Up until that point, when you were shown that she was deceased, your continued first reaction is to protect this guy. I I, you just said, I only saw a picture of him, whatever your verbiage was, I say blowjob, of 
his penis in her mouth and your first reaction was fuck oh my being victimized no she's being abused no it's stefan needs a lawyer who the fuck cares if we think he killed her he's I don't know why I said that. But that's the problem. You don't know why. So the reaction in your mind is you are continuously protecting this guy. So why do I sit here and believe that you don't Because right now you know Stefan killed her. You know Stefan's been raping her. You know without her body, can he be charged with murder? I don't know. Exactly. So you don't know what we can do. Do I think we can charge him with murder? It's not up to me. Should he be charged with murder? Yes. Please. Does your role in her life lead this to happen? I'll be honest. Yes. I know. Since she was a child, since her victimization started, it occurred under your roof and you acted like it didn't exist. And knowing the victimization, knowing the victimization, knowing how ongoing it is, knowing that you saw a picture of it, not just us telling you, not me and him saying, hey, listen, he's being they had a bad relationship they showed you a fucking picture of it and you still protected him so how am I supposed to not think that the thought process in your mind is until she's found Stefan can't be charged with murder because we both now know that you don't want him to be charged with murder because you want him to have a lawyer no I don't that Part was the blow job. That was oh, then. he can't be charged with murder. That was then. Everything that you guys have shown me since then and have shown me that he's so we have to show you a picture time? of her dead in the car for you to finally not take his side Do you not see where I'm coming from? Like, I'm not trying to no. be a dick here. No, but I it know. makes absolutely no sense that your next is Stefan. I don't know. Is it where does your mind go? Stefan. There, there should have been no doubt in your mind when they showed you that picture of what he was doing to you that you had any care in the world other than I want that motherfucker to die. Whether you believe in the death penalty or not. He protected him. So now we're talking about her disappearance and where her body is. Why do I believe that you're still not protecting him? Because you say so? But you can't explain why you protect him. You can't explain what is inside of you that makes you protect Stefan. And you may never be able to explain it. But eventually we're going to have to figure it out because you haven't convinced me that you're still not protecting Stefan. I got all these people out here searching. I haven't seen my own kid in days because I'm looking believe that I can't go home and see my kid is because you're protecting I can't go home because people sitting in the woods just waiting for me to tell them where to go but I can't because I think you're it's in trouble I don't care about him I want him to go to jail I want the worst thing possible to happen to him in jail I know what happens to predators in jail like I'm ready for that like please I don't give a fuck about him. I'm not protecting him. But you knew he was a predator when you show, got shown the picture. And then you text his dad that he needs a lawyer and you hope that he invoked was the words I was told. What? You hope that he didn't talk to us. He needs a lawyer. No. All over a picture. You didn't care. You didn't care then. Oh, whether sex isn't important to you. You, that no. wasn't anything close. I knew I knew what I saw was He was terrible. a predator right then and there. That's the day you found out he was a predator. Yeah. Yes. And after you found out he was a predator, did you not say he needed a lawyer? I did. So why today, Friday at almost 3 o'clock, five days into the disappearance, two days since you probably found out, or one day since you found out she was murdered, do I believe you that you're not telling me where he went, or that he didn't disclose to you where she was, or what caused this to happen is, listen, I know you know I've been doing whatever, or listen, this fucking happened. How do I believe that that didn't happen when everything you've shown me is protect Stefan? Now, once have you shown priority in this conversation, in this investigation, you're coming here looking for her. You reported her missing. Trouble for not doing that, but outside of you reporting her missing. And I may be wrong, I haven't been involved in all aspects of it, but you have not shown me one bit that you prioritized her over him. And that sucks. 
not because we're working our asses off for your family, not because we have people out there sweating their asses off for your family, but because I feel like all I care about is your care is to make sure Stefan doesn't get held fucking accountable. Well, I don't care anymore. Anymore? Because we're being assholes, because I'm not being nice. No. But up until Thursday, it was okay that she gave him a blowjob. No big deal. Get a lawyer. No, it wasn't. It wasn't okay. I was, honestly, I saw that and I was in shock. And I don't know why my first reaction was to tell him to get a lawyer, but I saw that and I was in shock and I was just like, I don't know what to believe. I don't know what to believe. It's easy to believe it now. We showed you pictures of it. You can't deny it anymore. You, the sex was okay. The murder's not. At least, you, no, at least that no, makes sense. No, that's okay. I want to know what it is. And not because I think you're a bad paradox. I think you're a bad Dead or alive, she's missing. Her body is out there. Her body needs to be recovered so she can have a proper burial, a proper funeral. She needs to be laid to rest. Your family needs to be able to mourn her. And we need that information. That is life. That is not life of the law. That's not life of the sheriff's office. That is common decency. That is what she deserves. That is what you deserve. That is what your family deserves. But the longer that happens, the longer it takes us to find her, the less likely that's going to be for you guys. And I'm sorry if I'm wrong. I truly am. But deep down, you haven't shown me that I am. I don't know what I need to Show you. Prioritize her over Stephen. Think, Stephen, think of places he would have dumped her body. I think am. of places he went, things you've talked about, things you've discussed, whether it's this week, last week. Don't put it in your mind that he's been victimized. Or don't put in your mind that I'm being a dick. What can I think about to find out where Stephen put her? You know more about where he goes, what he's doing, or what he would do than you want to realize. That's natural. Not because I'm telling you, but because that's natural. I have best friends. I know more about them than I think I know about them. I just need to sit down and think about it. So I need you to sit down and think about it. Whether you need a minute we're not in this room, whether you want to do it with us in this room, we need to leave here with an idea of where we can go look for That is one thing we can agree on. I've sent you the list of the stores that he may have stopped at and didn't stop at. The only outdoorsy places I can think of that we've ever gone to that he would know about would be Shingle Creek or Kissimmee Trail. I don't know if he knows where Lake Toho is, but that could be another option. Because you think it's a wooded area? Because it's a place you guys have talked about together? Because it's a wooded area with a lake, with gators? Like, we haven't discussed we haven't discussed anything. I this topic. I never. I never asked him if he directly. I never thought he could have. I always assumed the best in him. But I didn't ask him directly. I didn't even suspect. I didn't even suspect. Not until you guys showed me that picture upstairs. We're here. I don't know. I'm just thinking of, if I name places, it's going to be wooded areas that I can think of, but he hasn't told me anything. Like, he has not told me, or we haven't discussed. So him going to 192 that day, all you know was is that he went to 192. He said he, he wanted to visit House Carved Wools. That, show, that was one of the, he named three stores, and that's one store I can remember him listing on that list. House Carved Wools? Yeah, I don't okay. have my phone. We'll get your phone a little bit. House Carved Wools, what kind of store is that? I don't know if that's like a video game or card game or board top game store. But that's on 192. Close to one, I okay. think, I think close to 182 somewhere. And you said he wanted to go to three stores? Yeah. But he did tell me that he did. I just don't remember which one. Are there woods in that area? Are you familiar with 192? No. no. Not, not where these stores are. I have no idea. Other than... You came up with wooded areas that you know of. Yeah. You came up with wooded areas that you think he could double body in. Because I've been there with him, yeah. I need to know wooded areas where he travels. 
right? You're, you're saying we've been there so she could be there. So that tells me she's not there. It tells me it's a waste of a search. Because okay. when I put 90 plus people there, that's all day, right? We got to coordinate that. We got to put them there. So we need fruitful searches. Yeah. So I need likely places that you think, and I need places you think based off of conversations with him, not because you can picture in your mind that there's trees there. Now you got a flat tire. Tell me about the flat tire you got. Um, so he said he got a flat tire. Um, I'm not sure what when he got a flat tire, but he said it was he got a flat tire and then came directly home and he got home around 2:40. So flat tire, he said it. He was driving down 192 and it just popped and shredded and fell apart. Um, and he pulled over into a plaza and changed a tire for the first time in a very long time and said he hurt himself doing it. Uh, the frame of the car, something came down on his finger. All his lies, I don't care, but I want to know what you questioned him about. Why was he there? What was he doing? There's no way you're the most trusting woman in the world you just don't ask clarifying questions. I know no relationship I've ever been in is that trusting. He just tells you he's gone at 3 in the morning getting a fucking wild wild, and you're like, ah, oh, whatever, bet. Same thing with this. It's like, oh, yeah, I got a flat tire. I was here. Why is he in these places? Do you not question him? Why were you on 192? Why did you dip out at 3 in the morning with my car? I didn't know like he did Because this, this is two times he went to 192. Went to 192 the day she disappeared, right? He's roaming, looking for her south of where she went missing, because supposedly she went missing. 192 is south of where that is. And I, I, Not very likely that that's the route she went on foot or abducted and that him driving around is somehow going to locate her. And he did And he did tell, I did question that. I was like, when I asked him where he searched and he said 182, I said, why? That's nowhere she, where she would be. And he didn't give me a clear answer. And, and I don't know why I didn't push it. I just thought he was being stupid and oblivious because I don't, I don't see him as the smartest man. Like, I don't. I I let him do what he does, but I don't trust a lot of his, is, it, is the word judgment? I'm not sure, but I just don't trust that he makes the smartest decisions sometimes. Like, he likes to act like the smartest man in the room, but I don't think he is. Do what he does, meaning? I'm sorry? You said, I let him do what he does. Yeah. What's that mean? If he wants to just get up and go to the store, I'll ask where you're going. But I won't stop him. Just let him go on his way. Um, just let, I'll let him do what he wants to do. What do you think happened? Monday to now. You know she's deceased. We showed you pictures of she's deceased. We know that she was probably deceased Sunday into Monday. I still we didn't see her Monday morning. I still We're not, don't want to believe she's deceased. I know, you, we, I know you showed me pictures, but for like... For the purpose of this conversation, I need you to believe it because I need you to figure it out. I need you to I need you to tell me what you think happened to her. I think he killed her that night. How? I don't know. Could it be possible that he drugged her? Could, could he have choked her? I, I just don't know. How you kill someone and don't leave a mess or don't leave evidence or, I mean, was there a mess? Was there evidence? I haven't gone upstairs. I don't know what that what what you guys. Have, I barely went into the house today, so I don't know. What I need to know what you think happened. I think he killed her. How? You mentioned drugged her. You mentioned other things. Explain your reasoning behind those assumptions, and we'll move forward day by day. So he had access to benzos and I think Lunesta. What are those? I'm not familiar with that. Benzodiazepines are anxiety medications which relax you and can make you sleepy. Okay. Uh, and Lunesta I think is a sleeping medication, like for insomnia. 
So I don't know if it's possible he, he gave her something and she was drugged in, in those photos that you showed me where you're saying she's dead, maybe she was drugged, but if she is dead and it was done upstairs, I could just only imagine that he choked her. I don't know how else you would kill someone and not leave a mess. How do you think he got her out? I have no idea because roommates come in and out of the house at any given point in the morning and we don't know their schedules. They can come in at any time. You guys showed me, you guys showed me a picture I think of him or her in the car at 7.30 in the morning. My roommate left the house. She's the one who leaves the earliest. She left at 7.45. So like, what if he had waited a little longer? She would, she would have caught him with the, like carrying a body out of the house. How did he do that without being caught or seen? That's why I don't understand because, like, did you guys check and see if any of my neighbors have ring cameras? Any? Nothing? I don't know what data we've gotten from them, but at this point I need to know what you think happened to her. I don't need you to ask us what we found. Okay. What we found has happened. I need you to come up in your words, in your mind, what do you think happened that night into Monday because we do not know. We do not know if her murder occurred Sunday or Monday. All we know is that when you went to bed, they went to bed together, and she's no longer here. So I need to I, know what you think happened to her, how he got her out of the house, where he went, how he got her in the car, what is your thought on what happened? I think she was killed Sunday night, Sunday night into Monday morning. thinking he carried her out of the house. I don't know how he didn't get caught by any of my roommates or no one heard. You're saying he drove around all around town. I'm not sure where he could have gone. him coming home and leaving and coming home and leaving, what do you think? Knowing that he killed her. If That's you make, suspicious if you, if as fuck. It is suspicious as fuck, but if you're writing a book, what do you write? And this, let's say this is a fiction novel, right? You're now aware that he killed her, so now you can piece together a story of what happened, right? You don't know the story because you're not him, and you tell me he hasn't told you, so it's, it's, it's not real. So you're telling me what you think, Yeah. right? We know he killed her. We know he drove out of there Monday morning. We know he discarded her backpack in the trash dumpster. We know he discarded her laptop in one shoe, right? So all her property was discarded to look like she's gone. That way he doesn't have evidence with them. They leave. You've been told that they drove around Orange County, Osceola County, wherever it was. We've pieced that together throughout the week, all right? He's told you where, at least in his version of where he was and what he was doing, right? But then you have all these suspicious times of when he's left and come back and he's gone here and gone there. So what do you think he was doing on all these suspicious times? He's roaming 192. What do you think? Knowing what you know now, now we can play. You know she's dead. You know that we've given you information. What do you think, knowing what you know, he was doing at 192? He was doing here. He was doing here. He was doing in Northport. What do you think? So him leaving early in the morning and driving around aimlessly somewhere. I feel like he stashed the body at that time. When he came back and then left again. But see, it's daytime. Like, how could you move a body or move something in daytime and not be seen? But like, I feel like he went back to chain, to check to make sure he did a job or to move the body again. But him leaving the house multiple times without his cell phone is sketchy as fuck. It's so suspicious. Which is an intentional act. It's not accidental. So that can play into what you think happened. Yeah. Do you think... Phone 
me on the dresser. It was intentional. Her cell records and her cell data from her cell phone show it is not common for her to leave her phone at home. It is common for her to go to school with her. No teenager leaves their phone at home. It's what they're, they're attached to it. She's um, left her phone home multiple her times. Her cell data shows that normally it goes with her. So that's intentional. You know it's intentional because he left his too. Yeah. Right? Whether it's an accident last Friday, this Monday, it was not an accident. Yeah. So you think that he dumped her when he was driving around. You think that when he left, he went to check her body? Possibly. Okay. Why would you go back out to 182 without your cell phone? I don't disagree. So he goes out to 192. We think he may have checked where he dropped her, dumped her. He comes home. He tells you he's just roaming around aimlessly. Right? Yeah. So that's twice on the 192 in one day because he went to look at the house of cards bullshit or whatever it is. Yeah. And then he went to do the roaming to look for her on this random highway that he never goes to. Okay. Okay. We go into the next day and the next day. Think of the suspicious things he's done. Tell me what you think he's doing. Him grabbing my phone and trying to log into his emails, that seems kind of suspicious. What was he trying to see? What was he trying to do? The thing is, is when he had my cell phone, now that I think back to it, he had something wrapped around it. So the phone was under a blanket and he was like this. So I tried looking at the screen at one point and I could see an email. But and that was the cell phone we took from you today, or you gave us today. Her cell phone has Amber Alert searches in it, but I looked through her cell phone last night. I do believe that she may have been clicking on links for Amber Alerts that came through. I don't think she was actually searching them. Okay. They could have just been links she clicked on. Okay. Because I wasn't sure if that was him Googling on her phone about Amber Alerts or if that was her. That we will never know. He is not obviously cooperating. Can you, can you, can you like, can you guys explain what happened yesterday? Before um, that, I need you to continue going away. Yeah. Uh, where do we, where are we at? Uh, suspicious utilization oh. of your phone. Yeah. Of the phone. Him disappearing multiple times. Him disappearing to Northport. What the hell is he doing? That is suspicious. I mean, now that I know that that's where he went, that is suspicious as all fuck. Why? Why did he go to a storage unit facility? What was he grabbing? What was he trying to dispose of? Or what was he trying to hide in the... In the... That to me is suspicious. Do you put more weight on that than 192? 192? No, because 192 would be... Something happened in Northport. There would there'd be no reason he would... Do you, do you understand what I was asking? with that phrase, putting weight on it? Like, do you feel like it's more suspicious what he was doing in Northport versus 192? I don't know which one's, they're both, the, I don't know which one is more suspicious to me. They're bo they both, 192 seems to me like the easiest place he could have dumped her or like figured out where to put her unless she was in my trunk the whole time and he went to Northport. The trunk of your car? Yeah. Didn't you drive your car at some point? Did you guys sit in your car at some point? I did. So that's what I'm saying. Like I would have probably smelled something but I didn't. So I'm just trying to think I'm like did he stash her body in Northport? No, I don't think so. He's probably hiding something or destroying something. 
So I guess 192 would probably be the most important right now. For being your truck is oddly specific. The only reason I say that is because from what you guys have told me, he went directly from the hotel to Northport. I don't think he made any stops anywhere in Kissimmee or anything first and then went to Northport. All we know is what we can piece together through accessible cameras and data. So his, his movements, his driving patterns, his actions, we can only 100% say what they are if they're on camera. Okay. So we can say he went to Northport because the car was in Northport, where he stopped, where he went in between. That cannot be factual from us if we don't have a camera. It can just be an assumption, which is why I want your assumption, because you know him, I don't. I fell asleep at 3 34 o'clock in the morning. At the hotel, what was that, Monday night? Tuesday night? One I'm just trying to think like. Could he have had time to stop somewhere wherever he stopped her and then took her to Northport? I think he had time. Has he cleaned your car since he came back from Northport? Has he brought it to a car wash? Has he detailed it? Paid huh? somebody to come out? No. Because you, through your, we call it a fiction novel, you piece together what you think happened based on a suspicious activity and you ended with, you think he put her in your trunk and brought her to Northport. Yeah. I know I asked you to make assumptions, but now I want to know why. Why is that how we finished this? What What is in your mind leading you to believe that is the ending of the story? Because 192 seems like a really busy strip, and I can't think of anywhere immediately, like, other than going deep into St. Cloud, like passing St. Cloud, like going into Holopah or Harmony, that I could see some stashing the body somewhere around there. But Northport has so many wooded areas, and I feel like... He would be familiar with both areas. I just don't know him to ever drive down 182 super far down, like into St. Cloud. Um, but I've known him to drive around all around Northport. Um, but see, I don't want to say anything and like lead you guys down to Northport to do a search and nothing's there. I'm just We're going to go everywhere. We're searching woods right now where she's not. Okay. I just, I just want to be like, I know you guys are like looking for, looking at me for the details, but I'm like, I don't want to send you on a wild goose chase. You know him better than us. You got to really think. If I knew what to tell you, I would tell you. If I had the truth, I would tell you. I don't know anything. Jennifer, where do you think he took her? If 
if I were him and I had to stash a body, but I would never, I would never do this. My mind would say to go to Lake Toho. There's a lot of woods there, there's a lot of gators. Like I told you, there's going to come to a point where we will. Like, Volusia County Sheriff's Office just found somebody the other day that's been missing for a long time. People get found. Sometimes it's quick, sometimes it's not quick. I'm hoping this situation is today, tomorrow, Sunday. But we will find her. What you need to think about is when we find her, is there an opportunity or a chance that we are going to prove that you did not assist us to your full capability in this investigation? And if that is true, you need to think about the consequences of that. Consequences of hindering a murder investigation or a capital sexual battery investigation could be punishable up to probably the same charges, the same time in jail. I know you, th I know, you know that I don't believe what you're saying, and I know you know that I think you prioritize Stefan, but do you prioritize jail? You see what I'm saying? Like if we come back and prove that you sat in this room and misled us, no. That you didn't lead us in the right direction, or that you assisted, or you had knowledge, or you knew. You're going to be mourning from jail. Mm -hmm. If I knew anything, I, I, I swear I would tell you. He has mentioned, we haven't discussed this. I had no suspicion of anything. He did not tell me any more details of where he went that day other than those shops that I had mentioned. I'm, I'm giving you my truth. On any of the days that he came home after these suspicious outings, 192 trips, Northport trips, and everything else, did he change clothes? Did he come home and appear disheveled, sweaty, dirty. I don't believe he showered. He didn't bring that many changes of clothes with him, so I know he's repeated his outfit over and over. It's possible he could have come home all sweaty and disheveled after the supposed changing the tire thing, but I wasn't home to see that. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I didn't see him come home dirty or sweaty or anything like that. Did you do anything he normally doesn't do within the house around you? sitting on the computer chair, chatting away with me, talking about resetting his phone, not resetting his phone, updating his phone.
carry tools in his car to change a tire, typically. I think he said there was a tire iron in the car and the jack. Did he bring it inside? Did he leave it in the car? Mm-hmm. After? I think he left everything, everything was in the car. Did you ever go look at his car? To verify that he changed his tire? I don't think I did. Never dawned on you to go double check. Except by the time he would have got back from the tire, you were gone, right? Yeah. What you told us? Yeah. And then she was reported missing. Yeah. During that time. Yeah. It never dawned on you to be like, damn, did he really change his tire? Let me double check. No. We got home really late that evening and I didn't even think of doing that. This is part of our problem. He did so many things and you never questioned it. I didn't suspect him. How can we believe some of the stuff that you're telling us or believe that you don't know? I don't know how to say it. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm stupid and gullible and very trustworthy, but I didn't, I didn't think he'd be the type to do anything like this. I didn't doubt, I... But you knew he was vindictive. You described him as not trustworthy with his family. You described instances where you document where he was lying to his family, lying to you, lying to others. Lying to his family, yes, he, but lying you, to you me. You discussed that he wasn't that good of a person. You had to remember. It wasn't his family. You're not describing him in a positive light at all. So this trust, this this caring, all this stuff makes no sense because you de- Regardless of the victimization, describe him as a good person. He's stealing from his parents, right? But he never he, stole from me. You guys have no money, but all he's doing is ordering things, right? He's buying himself things. He's not. You described him as a selfish thief. You even, you even called it a robbery that he robbed his parents. So you, you're trusting this dude who just who you're describing as untrustworthy. But I thought he was. I think I only asked him if he took her to school when I when I called him and told him to come to the office. I asked him if you dropped her off at school, right? Because she never made it. And he said, Yeah. And I was like, She never made it. Where did you drop her off? Um, he- you guys sat in your car Tuesday night when I was out there. I was out there at least four hours. Just you two in that car. Yeah. You can't tell me you guys did not have any conversations about. There's no way. A reasonable person would have been questioning him. You were the last person with her. What the hell happened this morning? You never did that in that car. No. I I remember being on my phone. He was on my phone for a little bit. I know I was medicated. And I was just zoning out. I wasn't thinking anything of anything. I... I I never asked him. Just asking him that one time, to me, was... If he took her to school, that, that was enough answer for me. I don't know, I, I I just wanted to think not think the worst, I guess? I don't know. But I just didn't think he did anything. Now I know. But then I just, I didn't. 
I was still believing everything he was telling me. Juvenile robbery suspects utilize the excuse of, I was high on bars, I took Xanax, I was blacked out. Right? Every juvenile robbery suspect you, you interview, I was, in, in your words, medicated, in their words, high, incapacitated, drunk. It's an excuse to avoid admitting what happened. When you say you're medicated, I can't think of an amount of medication that will numb you so bad to numb the fact that your that investigation is occurring right in front of your face for your missing. So being medicated is just an excuse to avoid answering why you didn't discuss with him what happened. It minimizes your guys' interaction by saying you were not fully coherent. But there's a person I know who can sit in a car and watch a bunch of detectives and crime scene investigators and everybody else search her house, seize her house, see and be so numb that that somehow is not ringing bells, is not overcoming the power of this little medication. There's, there's no way. The human body will overcome that in a big situation. You didn't take enough medication to numb you of the reality of what was occurring. I mean... There's no way. Unless you were fully incapacitated, there's no way you were so numb that everything he described to you, everything I described to you, was not in the forefront of your mind. You weren't numb. Just like these robbery kids weren't blacked out. They weren't high enough to not remember the robbery. They just don't want to talk about it. No, it just, it wasn't clicking. It didn't click to me. Like, you, you guys telling me, like, it wasn't as obvious, like this and that. I, I still believed every, the story he had told me that when we were sitting in the car, I still fully believed everything he had told me. I didn't doubt him. I really thought you guys were going after the wrong guy. I'm like, they're wasting time. The, the, the real suspect is out there. She's being sex trafficked. That was my biggest fear is that she was being sex trafficked. I didn't think that she would actually be dead. But she thought enough to get him a lawyer. I really thought you guys were going after the wrong guy. At that point, from the jump, we've been trying to find her. That has been and will be our biggest priority. Him getting arrested for victimizing her was an accident. We only discovered that she was a victim because we took his phone. And I'm like so happy that happened because if not, this would have continued to keep happening. Well, it wouldn't have because he killed her on Monday. There's no, I've asked this before, but there's no like map you guys can show me of like with a highlighted route of where he could have taken to see if I could see if I could recognize anything or suspect anything. I can pull a map my phone in the areas you described and we can go through it. Sure. You said house of cards? No. House, house card. game house game rules. House game. On Vine Street and Kissimmee. By yeah, Oak Street. There you go. That's mm -hmm. house rules. Feel free to drag the map around as you please. That's all, but you know, we got And realistically, Florida has a lot of wetlands, so anything you see that's green may not necessarily be wooded, it's maybe a rural, but. We're looking more for where you think based off of his route, not necessarily just like the green parts of the map. Yeah. In the back of House Gate Walls, I have access to the lake. I 
that is that is the one shop I can remember him specifically naming that he was going to that Monday. He said have skiing bowls. Did he make it there? I don't know. See, if we ever if we ever went down 192 together, it would typically be in, in this direction towards 535, towards Disney. That's why I find it really strange that you guys say St. Cloud, because we've never, I've never gone into St. Cloud with him before. So you told me you have a friend in St. Cloud. I do. I don't know if he knows, but explain to him where she lives, who she is. Explain that relationship to him, because I don't think he's aware of it. No. Oh, okay. Um, so one of my really good friends lives off of Old Canoe Creek Road, off Nolte. Okay. Um, I don't know what, what neighborhood, though. Um, she's one of my really good friends. She's somebody I know that lives in St. Cloud. She's one of like two people I know that live in St. Cloud. Um, she's hung out with us, as in me and Stefan before. She's come over to hang out with me and Stefan would be hanging out there too, so we would all kind of hang out together. But, um, yeah, she's just, she's just a friend. Um, and you're 100% sure he's never been to her house? Yes. they have their own friendship or is it just that's your friend and the only time he ever talks to her or hangs out with her is with you exactly okay. just my friend he would talk when she was around and you just told me about the second person in St. Cloud who is that um somebody I haven't seen in a, a long time her name is Courtney Brackman she lives can you pull up the map mm -hmm. But he's never been over to her house either. about St. Cloud and you know he had asked for your top five places um, why did this never did this ever cross your mind Lake Lizzie any of these places in St. Cloud that you're familiar with uh, I mentioned them the first time St. Cloud was brought up I mentioned my two friends that live there um, and then I don't know if I ever mentioned Lake Lizzie Do you know if Lake Lizzie was special? She did enjoy going out there. Was she verbal about that? Like, did she make that known to you guys? She always told me that if we were, we were to go hiking out there, to let her know. Because I've gone hiking without her. Um, but it's been a really long time since I've done a hike down Lake Lizzie with her. Yeah, that's the only place 
least one thing about that I would know, that I could think of, that he might be aware of, but. So actually your gut tells us no. Like Lizzie, probably not. Like does he even remember what the name of Lake Lizzie is? Probably not. like Dungeons and Dragons and Warhammer 40k, card games like Lorcana, which is a Disney card game. That's what he told me he was going to go do uh, Monday. He was going to go look for Lorcana cards and that's why he was going to go to House Card, uh, House Rules Gaming. Um, he was just going to make a few stops and I said, why are you doing that? Why are you wasting time when we don't have money? Like, you don't have money to spend. He's like, oh, I'm just browsing. I just want to look. I want to see what they have available. That's all he said. Every time I did question him, he always had an answer. know like up until when on 182 you guys found him uh see him like how far down we just know it's sync cloud so i keep thinking like house game rules on 182 okay it's got some secluded stuff in the background or in the in the, in the back of it but it's still 182 it's still really busy So right now, I'm pretty sure we're still doing your phone. I think. How'd you get here? You're driven here? I was driven here, but my dad followed behind. I think you guys said my car might be ready. I'll be able to verify that in a minute. Um, the invest, the, the invest is it still going? Yeah. Right, Stefan also is not in charge of murder. Right, just the sexual. He's not or he is? He has not been. Oh, 
Oh. He's just been charged with sexual battery. I have a couple questions for you that are going to be on record. They're going to be official. I'm going to need you to answer truthfully. Because if they determine that you did answer not truthfully, you can be held accountable for it. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Raise your right hand. Do you swear that everything we talked about today in this interview is true and correct? Yes. Did you lie to me or the detective at any time? No. Okay. Do you currently know or have you ever been aware of where your body has been since Monday? No. Did you have any... No. Were you aware at any time, whether it be the most recent instance or the first instance, sexually by Stefan. Okay. At this time, you do not know where Stefan went on 192? I don't. You do not know where he went in Northport? I do not. And you have had no time this week at any conversations with Stefan where he disclosed what he did? No. Okay. The story that we talked about of what at one point we discussed that she could potentially have been in a trunk on the way to Northport. Yeah. Is that information you, you know to be true or an assumption? An assumption. Okay. Do you have any questions for us before we go check on the phone in the car? We may not be able to answer everything, but if you have questions, we can see if we can not answer those questions. It's not your only opportunity. You, your only opportunity phase was you saying you swear. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, the only opportunity, you obviously have numerous detectives' phone numbers, you have numerous agencies' phone numbers, things like that. So realistically, there will be other options for you to ask questions. I don't think I have questions right now. Okay. I don't want you to think I was purposely an asshole to you. No, I know. All We're right. doing your job. Like I told you, like the sheriffs have probably reached out. You've been in communication with numerous people here. Those are my opinions and my opinions only. They don't reflect Sheriff Mina, the Chief of PD, Kyle, any other detectives who talk to you. All right. I personally don't know. All right. We will be here all weekend. We will be here all night. My only hope is that you truthfully did not lie to us. You truthfully don't know where she was. And that you truthfully did not know what was happening to her.
that right now. Your car is obviously it will be released to you, the Nissan. Okay. It requires us to do some paperwork because we did log it into our system. So now that it's in our system, we got to release it properly to you, which is no big deal. It'll take a couple minutes. Because of the high profile. All right, I know you said we can download your phone, and I do appreciate your cooperation with that. But because the same way we did with Stefan and every other phone and digital device we've seized, they're making us write a search warrant on it, which really doesn't affect you too much. The search warrant is a legal thing. It's not a you thing. It's not a trust thing. But with that, it, it takes a little bit longer. Yeah. All right, so I can release your car to you right now. We can go facilitate that downstairs. I cannot make you a promise that that phone will be downloaded by the time your car's ready. What I can promise you is that the moment it is downloaded, if you have left from here, I will bring it to you. Do you have, a do you have, you're staying with your sister still? Does anybody have your sister's phone number that we can make sure we can communicate with you on? Yeah. Um. My dad is downstairs, I think, waiting for me, so I can give you my dad's number since he'll be Whatever phone numbers we can have, just to make sure that yeah. if we are unable to give you the phone back today, we'll yeah. tell my shit out there. That way, if we are unable to give you the phone back, we at least are able to contact you, and we want to make sure you have a phone to contact us if something arises, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, for sure. What's dad's number? What's his name? Are you going to be going back to your condo? Or are you going to go to? I don't, I don't think I'm returning to my townhouse. I really don't want to so what we'll do is we will walk you out this back parking lot if the car is in the back corner so i'll walk with you we'll go through the back so we don't go through the front lobby it was a press conference today obviously neither of us got none of us got to see what was said i assume it's just an update um, but we will go through the back to go get the car and that way we are not walking through the front lobby making you wait out there. I don't know if there's still media present. I assume you're not in the state or moved to go walk past 32 news cameras. Okay. So we will go out the back and get the car and I'll show you how you can leave here and we can call your dad from the back so he can know where to go or where to meet you. Yeah. We can just tell him, hey, we're gonna, she's gonna be in the back parking lot. You can drive around. You guys can follow each other out or whatever you choose to do that way. All right.